We may have made a mistake by leaving mid alone. Knew I was able to get some good damage. We pop a shell. We use our ultimate. We're going to throw our two. We miss it. We're going to activate our three. Increase movement speed. Provide a heal to the new wall. Activate our two. Alan he uses his ultimate, so he's able to get CC immunity. Activate our one. We're able to get the pick onto the on here. We're going to throw out our two. We are able to win the team fight, and we should be able to take a Phoenix for it. Looks like they're also able to take the Phoenix and mid. Poseidon's here. He's making a strong play for the new all. We're going to dash through, kind of ruin things for him a little bit. Hit him with the one. Hit him with the two. And we're able to get the pick onto the Poseidon. Mercury's here. We're in trouble. We're going to wiggle. Sobek throws us away from Mercury. Best thing that could have happened right there. We're going to wiggle a little bit, and we're going to dash away. Erlong's able to get the pick onto the Mercury. We're going to cast our two. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're doing a skin showcase for the Season 7 Cthulhu as support. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, I feel like Cthulhu is usually played in solo lane, but he's also a pretty decent support. So let's go ahead and jump into his kit. Starting with Cthulhu's passive, Prey on Fear. Cthulhu breaks down the mental fortitude of enemy gods, applying stacks of torment with abilities and the final hit on his basic attack chain. On reaching 4 stacks of torment, enemies affected are going to become insane. Additionally, Cthulhu gains magical power per enemy god with insanity. Insanity is going to last for 20 seconds, format is going to last for 5 seconds. Cthulhu is going to gain 25 magical power per enemy with insanity. Cthulhu's 1. Sanity Break. Cthulhu sends out a terrifying blast of energy, dealing damage to all enemies hit and reducing their attack speed. Enemies hit by this ability also do reduce damage to Cthulhu for 6 seconds. This ability applies 1 stack of Torment, 2 stacks if the enemy is facing Cthulhu, or it fears them instead if they are affected by Insanity. Successfully consuming Insanity permanently increases the base mitigation of this ability. The attack speed slow is going to be 10% at level 1, 30% at level 5 for 3 seconds. The fear duration is going to be 1.5 seconds, and the damage mitigation is 20% plus 0.5% per stack, maximum of 30%. Cthulhu's 2, the Mire. Cthulhu summons a portal, creating a slow field of Eldrick's Mire at the target location. While Cthulhu channels, the Mire continues to grow as the portal fires out two massive shots of corruption that hit and damage all enemies in the field. The first shot slows enemies, while the second shot roots them. Both hits apply one stack of torment. Canceling this ability early stops the Mire from growing or the portal from firing additional shots. The slow is going to be 10%, the corruption slow is going to be 35%. The root duration is 1 second, and the Mire duration is 3 seconds. Cthulhu's 3, Rushing Terror. Cthulhu creates two twisting projectiles at his side as he unflurries his wing and charges forward, damaging, stunning, and knocking away enemies hit. The projectiles follow at a slightly slower pace, but travel further, damaging enemies as well. Enemies hit by Cthulhu or the projectiles gain one stack of torment. And finally, Cthulhu's ultimate, Descent into Madness. Cthulhu reveals his true form and enemies caught nearby are going to be damaged. In this form, Cthulhu gains increased health, becomes immune to crowd control effects, and gains access to new abilities. Enemies near Cthulhu gain stacks of torment, increasing in pace if they are facing him. Enemies also suffer the debuff effects of Sanity Break, causing them to deal less damage to Cthulhu. Cthulhu is going to gain 30% increased health. The duration is going to increase from 10 seconds to 14 seconds from level 1 to 5. Cthulhu's 1 in the ultimate form is going to be Sever. He's going to swipe down and reduce enemy protections by 3%. It can stack up to 5 times. Cthulhu's 2 is Devastate. He's going to throw this ability out and it's going to knock up enemies. And then Cthulhu's 3, Transfuse. Cthulhu is going to give up 6% of his maximum health and provide his team with some benefits. Cthulhu's below 20% health, this ability does not damage Cthulhu, but the ally effects are reduced by 50%. 
He's going to heal allies 10% at level 1, 14% at level 5. He's going to give everyone 20 power at level 1, 40 power at level 5. He's going to increase everyone's movement speed by 20%. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point into our 2. Level 2, put a point into our 1. Level 3, put a point into our 3. Then we want to max out our 2. Max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 1, then max out our 3. We left Fountain with Guardian's Blessing, Tier 1 Boots, 4 Health Potions, and the Hand of the Gods. We used Hand of the Gods on the Purple Camp. Maybe the Harpies, I forget how we started. We're gonna dash in, the Sobex out of mana. AMC says he's out of mana, so we're gonna fall back with him. Currently, we have enough money for Boots. We're gonna go ahead and hit this Purple buff with AMC. Cthulhu does have an attack chain, single hit, single hit, AoE hit, and the AoE hit applies a stack of torment. Both enemies are pretty weak right here. We're going to cast our two, get a slow tick onto the on her, force him to dash out, which is always nice. We do have our ultimate. If we were a little healthier, we would try to go and gank mid. We are going to be going into the lifesteal boots. This is going to help us sustain a little bit more in the fights. The cooldown boots are also viable. Same with the tank boots, but I think the lifesteal boots are going to fit our playstyle the best. So we hit level 5. AMC is level 5. We're going to go ahead and leave him alone in that lane. We don't want to split wave with him. We just want to help out mid and let AMC do a lot of farming. Sidon's a little overstepped. We use our two, slow, root, and the cuckoo is able to use his ultimate and get the pick onto the Poseidon. Poseidon also uses his ultimate. So that has a double win for us. We're gonna peek the enemy red buff. Here comes Sovac. We're gonna set up a ward. Hit him with our one. So I heard this tip from aggro and I think it is unbelievably true. If you are support, your mid lane does not need help clearing wave. So this Cuckoo, he's going to clear wave every single time. We're saving all of our abilities to initiate fights, to provide peel, to do anything but clear wave. The Mercury blinks in. They're going for their red buff. We might be able to get in here and be an annoyance. We're going to cast our two. We get the slow onto the Poseidon. That's it. We're going to go ahead and fall back. Our red buff is up, so we do want to try to help out there. We're rotating right. Mercury is over here. We're going to dash in. This is going to knock back and root the Mercury. We're going to use our two. Slow root. We're going to use our ultimate, get some good damage. Activate our two in the ult form, hit him with the one, and we're able to clean up the Mercury. We're going to activate our three, increase movement speed for myself and the AMC. We're going to make a play for this on her. Cast our two. Boom. Excellent way to start the game. We are pretty low on mana. There's probably not too much we're going to be able to do right here. We're going to go ahead and back ourselves. Looks like Erlong is in a little bit of trouble. We stopped our back to try to rotate and help him, but he went down before we could do anything. Gonna go ahead and start working on the purple buff because AMC is on his way. Whenever we upgrade R2, we are also reducing the cooldown of R2. Whenever we're in an ultimate form, R2 is gonna deal more damage. Merc and Poseidon ults are down, called out by the Erlong Shen. Bit of a team fight going on in the left. It looks like Erlong's rotating over. We're gonna rotate over as well. 
As support, we are a rotating band-aid. Erlong's able to get the pick. Looks like we're no longer needed on left, so we're going to start making our way back to mid. Bit of a fight going on here. We're going to see if we can rotate in and help out. Hit him with the one. We miss our two, but Erlong's able to clean it up. Sobek's on our cuckoo. We're going to rotate mid. Two people fighting this cuckoo. We get knocked back by Poseidon. They're really chasing down Cuckoo. We're gonna dash in, knock back the Sobek. Use our two, get the slow and the root. And the, oh, unfortunate bit of events right there. The Cuckoo uses ultimate, we cleaned him up with a one. We didn't mean to take the kill, but I don't think, I think we secured it, I don't think we took it. And then Poseidon was able to ult the Cuckoo. Erlong's in a bit of a bad position. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of rotate out. Nothing we can really do to help him out. He was too far up on the map. We're gonna go ahead and back ourselves, and we're gonna be picking up Galana Thebes. Galana Thebes is initially gonna provide us 300 health and 15 HP 5. It has a passive that if we get a assist on an enemy minion, we're going to gain one stack. If we get an assist on an enemy god, we're going to gain five stacks. Each stack is gonna provide us with one magical and one physical protection. At 50 stacks, this item is going to evolve, providing allies within 70 units, 10 additional physical protections, and 10 additional magical protections. So this item, whenever it is fully evolved, is going to give 50 magical protections, 50 physical protections, and it is also going to give 300 health and 15 HP 5. We're able to get another kill. We are just going off this game. Plus, it's also going to give our teammates 10 physical protections and 10 magical protections. So we are just going to be a rotating buff for our team, providing additional protections. This skin was in the digital loot pack. I think it is probably the weakest of the skins, unfortunately. Just by the name, you can kind of tell. Season 7 Cthulhu. I feel like it's just a recolor. I feel like last year, the was a King Arthur skin. That was probably the weakest. I think it's they have some cool skins, and then they have a weak skin. So let's take a look at Cthulhu's passive icon. He has 20.5% and what that means is that we've used our one on a target that had insanity successfully once. The next time we use our one on someone, we're going to gain 20.5% damage mitigation. It only affects our one. We're gonna hit our one, we're gonna, oh, we get crippled. We get knocked back. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of chill. So that caps out at 30%. And then we have five closed eyeballs above that number. What that represents is the enemies of the enemies that are near us that have insanity. They are not near us, so we're getting zero additional magical power. Poseidon is able to get the pick onto the cuckoo. We're gonna rotate back mid. Hit him with our one. So now Sobek would be dealing damage to us while we have 20.5% damage mitigation against him. We're gonna peek the blue buff, it's not there. We're gonna come up behind this tier. Up, oh, Nuwa said missing left, so we're gonna head back mid. There's tier. Rotating Band-Aid. That's all we are. We're gonna dash in. There's his ultimate. We're gonna use our two. It gets a slow. Misses the root. We're gonna activate our one. We're gonna use our ultimate. We're gonna throw a knock up. Hit him with the one. Activate our three. Increase our movement speed. We're gonna chase him down. Take some tower shots. We do want to step out of the tower. 
We're gonna use our two, then our one. Enemy team is rotating in. Right here, we're being way too aggressive. We should have stopped after our ultimate. Right now, we don't have the mana. Mercury ults in on us. We pop our shell. I think we tagged Erlong. And Newall was working on tower. Once we exited our ultimate form, we dashed in, and that was the wrong play. So we go down. We're being a little too aggressive right there. We should have looked at the minimap and seen if Newall was following us or if she was just chilling. She was just chilling, working on tower. So after going into Gauntlet of Thieves, we're going to be going into Relic Dagger. Relic Dagger is going to provide us 300 health, 10% cooldown, and 7% movement speed. It's passive is it's going to take off 40 seconds from all of our Relic cooldowns. So we should be able to activate our shell more often and help out our team, gaining 10% cooldown, some additional health, and 7% movement speed. Movement speed is king and smite. 7% might not sound like a lot, but it's going to really help us chase down people, engage and disengage. On her uses a jump, Erlong's rotating in, we're going to activate our 2. Did not mean to take it, but that's kind of how Cthulhu's kit works. So Bex a little far up, he just uses his dash. We're gonna check the enemy red buff. Somebody's here, we're gonna dash in. Use our one. That is a ultimate. Did a not nearly as much damage as I thought it was going to. We're gonna use our ultimate, activate our three, and just get on out of here. Cuckoo's able to land a very nice ult, and get the pick. Our team provided us very good peel, or we were just very good bait right there. Taking a look at the enemy team composition, they have three physical characters and two magical characters. After going into Relic Dagger, we're going to be going into Sovereignty. So we got Thorns as our second relic, which is a little bit spicy. Doesn't help our team too much, and it's more of a solo relic. But if we can activate our Thorns, ult, and then we are going to do a lot of damage. Especially to anyone who's attacking us. We really got this Thorns to bait out the On Her and the Mercury. Those are going to be the two concerning characters. AMC's in a bit of trouble. We're gonna rotate in, see if we can help out. Well, he's already down, but we're gonna see if we can get a pick. Looks like the fight is in left, so right there. We kinda went left, then we kinda went right, and then we're actually going left. Very indecisive right there. We're gonna activate our two. Get the slow onto Poseidon. It's also gonna apply one stack of torment. Two people over and right. So we went left, right, left, and now we're going back right. It looks like they backed because they're not here. Your middle tower is under attack. We're going to rotate into jungle. We don't want to take too much of AMC's farm. He says, wait on the purple buff. I don't think we were going to kill any of the minions by the time he made it there. Especially if we were just using our basic attacks. Team fight going on in left jungle. We're going to rotate over. We do have our ultimate and both relics. That's a Mercury ultimate. We're going to dash in. We're going to chase down the Mercury. Activate our two. Slow. Unfortunately, we're going to get it on the double hit. Terrible thorns by us.
We're gonna dash in, hit him with the knock up. Not the knock up, but the dash, and we miss our two somehow. Okay, this would be a great place to have our thorns. We're in trouble right here. Right here, he's gonna stick to us. We gotta wiggle. We gotta do something that's gonna make him miss. We pop our shell. To save ourselves, we're gonna dash towards our team. And then we're gonna use our ultimate, activate our three, give everybody some movement speed. That was more just to scare the Mercury off of us than to actually do anything. If we're taking a tower shot, we're gonna fall back a little bit. Deciding to use his ultimate, see if we'll get the pick on the AMC. We're gonna use our two, fall back. New was in a little bit of trouble. We're gonna, oh, that's Cuckoo. He's in a little bit of trouble. We're gonna try to help him out. New is here, she gets some great damage. Cuckoo's able to get the pick. What a turnaround. It's just the Poseidon left. I think Poseidon can defend a single Phoenix. Sobek also just came back. I think we should go for Gold Fury right here. This is a Oni Fury. This Oni Fury is going to give everyone on our team a little bit of gold. And it's also going to spawn an enhanced minion weight in each lane. Poseidon's here. We are very weak. We got to avoid taking damage. And the enemy team steals away the Oni Fury. Good play by them. Bad play by us. Poseidon has better secure. Cuckoo's ult was down. We gotta fall back and we're gonna pick up Sovereignty. Sovereignty is gonna provide us 250 health, 45 physical protections, and it has a passive that we're going to provide 15 physical protections and 35 HP 5 to all allies within 70 units. So between the Sovereignty and Gauntlet of Thieves, we're providing our team 25 magical protections and 30 HP 5. The 30 HP 5 is going to be a very nice little addition. HP 5 is the amount of health you gain every 5 seconds. So if our teammates are standing near us, they're going to be tankier and they're going to regenerate their health a little bit faster. We are a walking buff for our team. <laughs> and we mess up Kuku's ability really bad right there. He casts it to hit the whole minion wave, and we dash in and just prevent the minion wave from walking into it. We're gonna set up a ward on Fire Giant, that's really the next objective. They got gold, we got pyro. The Pyromancer is going to make it to where whenever you leave Fountain, you're going to be 40% faster for the next 15 seconds. So it really helps you get back to lane. Retreat. Taking a weird path. Poseidon's here. Erlong's in trouble. We use our two. Unfortunately, they were able to get the pick onto Erlong. Nuwa's over in right. This is a bad fight for us, so we want to try to fall back and regroup as a team. We will pick a fight with Poseidon if we can. Activate our one. On her jumps away. We're gonna dash in, hit Poseidon with our one, hit him with a two, slow. And he's just so fast, he's able to zoom out of it before the root activates. Nuwa's pushing right, two people pushing mid. We can split push this right here. We may have made a mistake by leaving mid alone. Nuwa's able to get some good damage. We pop a shell, we use our ultimate. We're gonna throw our two, we miss it. We're gonna activate our three, increase movement speed, provide a heal to the Nuwa. Activator 2, and he uses his ultimate so he's able to get CC immunity. Activator 1, we're able to get the pick onto the on here. We're going to throw out our 2. We are able to win the team fight, and we should be able to take a Phoenix for it. Looks like they're also able to take the Phoenix and mid. Poseidon's here, he's making a strong play for the new all. We're going to dash through, kind of ruin things for him a little bit. 
Hit him with the one, hit him with the two, and we're able to get the pick onto the Poseidon. Mercury's here, we're in trouble. We're gonna wiggle. Sobek throws us away from Mercury. Best thing that could have happened right there. We're gonna wiggle a little bit and we're gonna dash away. Erlong's able to get the pick onto the Mercury. We're gonna cast our two. Sobek's still chasing us down, but our team is now collapsing. Hit him with our one. And we're able to clean him up as a team. So after going into Sovereignty, we're going to be going into Heartward Amulet. Heartward Amulet is going to provide us 55 magical protections and 250 health. Allies within 70 units are going to gain 15 magical power and 30, not magical power, magical protections and 30 MP5, which is the amount of mana you gain every 5 seconds. So now if our allies are near us, they're gaining 25 magical protections. 25 physical protections, 35 HP 5, and 30 MP 5. We are just a walking buff for our team. And then after going into Heartward Amulet, we're going to be going into Pridwin. Pridwin is going to provide us 30 physical protections, 30 magical protections, and the major stat we're interested in is 20% cooldown. It has a passive that when your ultimate ability has finished casting, you're going to gain a shield equal to your protections for 5 seconds. When destroyed by timing out or being depleted, it explodes and deals magical damage equal to 50% of the shield's initial health and slows the target by 25% for 3 seconds. This effect can only occur once every 45 seconds. So it's whenever ultimate finishes casting. So we ult, we go crazy in the descend into madness form. But if we're running low on health, we can cancel out of that form and then get a shield equal to about 450 health. We have about 450 protections. Just about. We actually have 444. But we're just going to round that up. And then when the shield explodes, it's going to deal half that damage. So about 225. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate, activate our 3, increase our movement speed. Probably not the best ultimate in the world, we're going to rotate over to the team fight. It's really just Sobek left for us to hit. He can survive our attack. We're going to activate our 2, try to get some pokes onto the Titan, try to poke out this Poseidon a little bit. The Titan is here, we're going to go ahead and wiggle on around. Oh, why didn't we use our one right there? We totally could have gotten that Mercury. Misplay right there. Our team's cleaning up. We're going to use our one. We're able to clean up their damage. Now it's just the on her and the tier left. We're going to go ahead and just start working on the Titan. On her is making some plays. We're going to try to help and help out the new wall. On her is going to get the pick onto the new wall. We're going to work on the on her. That is a Dia side. We should be able to clean this game up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.